now that Gervonta Davis is the A-side over Ryan Garcia, boxing fans trying to tap out saying they don't care who's the A-side and they just want to see the fight. How ironic. What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Make sure you come in, smash the like button. Now, you know how to come back with some heat. SLC, subscribe, like, and comment. So, I want to make this video because there's a lot of chatter and I seen Leonard Ellerby of Mayweather Promotions and he was getting some foolish responses and I felt it's my duty to break down this situation now of course I want to see the Ryan Garcia versus Javante Davis fight and I hope the fight happens I'm not in control of if the fight happens or if it doesn't happen but I do want to see it as a fan I do think it's premature for Ryan Garcia but the amount that Ryan talks and him calling out Tank and promising the knockout, plus his star power. He, he provides a brand. Some people know him, and you know that's enough to to make a big fight. It, you know, I know this is going to sound unique for some people, but I actually liken Gervonta Davis versus Ryan Garcia to a bigger version of Errol Spence versus Mikey Garcia, and. The reason I say this is because I feel the same way with both fights. I like Mikey Garcia. You know, I have no problem with Ryan Garcia. But I don't really see too much way for the B side, which in that case was the Mexican American fighter, Mikey Garcia. And in this case, it's the Mexican American fighter, Ryan Garcia, both last name Garcia, right? I didn't really see a way that he was going to get it done. And I made that prediction on my channel, and I was right. And I do believe that Errol Spence helped wreck the career of Mikey Garcia. And I'm not blaming Errol Spence. Mikey Garcia is the one that said he wanted to smoke. You know, it is what it is. But the reason that I'm comparing these two fights, and I know some people are scratching their eyebrow like, Ego, what do you mean? Well, you know, what's get to the point. My point is this. It's the fight where it really doesn't need to happen, but based on one person the b-side's hesitant or insistence to continually call out the a-side fighter and the value of that person's name in terms of they have like you look at mikey garcia mikey garcia comes from a fight family his brother's a former two-time champion and he's an acclaimed trainer his dad an acclaimed trainer you know he comes from the fight family so mikey kept calling out errol spence a lot of people said, hey, you're foolish, you're crazy. Even his own brother trainer, even his own dad, they said, nah, that's not the fight for you, Mikey. But Mikey being stubborn, you know, he talked himself into that opportunity and said, I see something. And then, you know, he got what he was looking for. But the reason I'm comparing it to Ryan Garcia is because I see the fight being the same. I see in the case with Mikey Garcia, he kept poking the stick at the bear. He kept, you know, taunting the pit bull and then he got bit. And based on, you know, after the call out, Mikey Garcia did some radio spots after the call out. He kept mentioning Errol Spence's name. You know, he wasn't as disrespectful. I'll give him that. Wasn't as disrespectful as like, let's say, a Ryan Garcia. But he kept mentioning Errol Spence in interviews and people like, you're crazy. You can't be serious. And he's like, oh, I'm serious. I'm serious. And then it just built. And then you looked at the networks and the networks were like, oh, we could do that, you know. And then they cram 50,000 people into the AT&T Stadium and boom, there you have a fight. But it's kind of the same thing. The fight happened because a fighter kept insisting on the fight and it made dollar signs. And that's what I see right here with Gervonta Davis. If Gervonta fights Ryan Garcia, you know, it's boxing. I'm not going to say Ryan has zero chance, but I see him having the same chance as Mikey Garcia. A slim chance. Don't see him winning. And, you know, based on his namesake or his fan base or whatever the fight may happen but as i said in the beginning of this video i find it remarkably funny that once it's all but provable like there, there's multiple ways you can prove that gervonta davis is in fact the a-side over ryan garcia because we know the a-side is similar to a popularity contest yearbook superlatives so that being said you got to give all the you would tick off all the check boxes 
in favor of Javante Davis. He's the guy that's been a champion. He's the guy selling more, bigger live gates. He's the guy putting on bigger events. He's bringing out more A-list celebrities, like in prime LeBron James and Drakes and, you know, Lil Wayne, in prime Lil Dirk, walking him out, right? Stuff like that. He bringing in prime celebrities out to his events. Tory Lanez, Madonna. Everything is just bigger. Everything is just like, in his favor so i find it remarkable that de la hoya is playing this game floyd told him to do an interview with fight hype he did it but he's capping in the interview he's talking about their equal stars listen i keep saying this i'm gonna keep saying it for the new people watching my channel speaking of in the last 30 days i looked at my youtube analytics and it showed me something it said 50 percent of the people that watch my content last month for free on this beautiful platform youtube subscribe so thank you the other 50 percent that means you didn't subscribe to the channel for the latest and greatest in all of boxing hit the subscribe button i'll keep you guys locked in keep you guys plugged in and keep dropping the hits so you're well informed on what's going on in the world of boxing oscar de la hoya he knows he's playing a game he can't win quit playing them childish games with grown men i got apartments you could put your home in like hove said he playing the game because he knows statistically there's nothing that Ryan. That's why Ryan's promotion and they're they're building him. They're saying Ryan, he doesn't need any belts. He's the king of boxing. And, you know, they're trying to brainwash the fans into believing this poppycock that Ryan is above the belts. He doesn't need belts. He doesn't need legacy. He doesn't need to fight Devin Haney. He doesn't have to do anything. Right. And. It just sounds ridiculous. De La Hoya is saying that he's lying on Tank's numbers, saying Tank did fewer pay-per-views, not showing any receipts. But even if what he said, which I believe is a lie about Tank doing less than 100, you know, doing 100K pay-per-view buys, even if that was the case, Tank Davis has been on pay-per-view since the Leo Santa Cruz fight. So that's Leo Santa Cruz. That's Mario Barrios. That's it was supposed to be Roley. And then it switched to Eastside Pitbull Cruz and then Roley. That's four fights. Even if he did 100,000, you add that up, 400,000 just off of if he did 100K each time out, then four fights, which they've all been pay-per-view at this point on Showtime, then he would be sitting at 400K. So even if that's your argument, that's still 400K more than Ryan Garcia's sold on pay-per-view. Oh, that's right. Because Ryan Garcia has never been placed on pay-per-view. So no matter what De La Hoya says, he cannot win in this arena. Tank is the bigger name. You can look at the commission reports and see the viewership. You know, that's questionable. People are like, oh, different pay-per-view numbers or whatever. But from the stuff we could see, you could look at the commission reports and see what the attendance was, what the recorded attendance in California or New York was. Right. You can see the live gate. That stuff is turned in. So no matter what De La Hoya says, I think they don't want the fight. Maybe Ryan Garcia wants to fight, but definitely not his promoter. And they're creating obstacles and trying to pump fake like they want the fight just to play the blame game. So I'm not holding my breath out for this fight. Let me know how I did in this particular video. And it's just sad because at the end of the day, despite me personally thinking the fight's premature, some people want to see it right now, and we may not get it because of this gamesmanship, and there's really no argument. Ryan is not the A-side. Boom. Let me know how I did in this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Subscribe to the channel for the latest and greatest. And I'm up. Introducing Super Thanks. Right here on the official Boxing Ego YouTube, Super Thanks allows you, the viewers, to show a little bit of extra gratitude, which enables me as a full-time content creator to push out the content you need in the world of boxing. Underneath all the videos, you will see a heart with the dollar sign in it. You can enter any amount that you find suitable as a super thanks. A brand new interactive and colorful way to get your comments highlighted and noticed by not only myself, but other people on the YouTube platform. Super thanks, a unique and cool way to show and applaud us full-time content creators. Hopefully you guys enjoy the content. Super thanks. The future is now. The Hibernation 5s by Kenichi Bear. Hybrid gaming and lifestyle headphones. Out of the box, you can connect to any console or PC. Bluetooth ready. 
with a low latency USB adapter, color RGB, and extreme bass mode. The Hibernation 5s adjust to you. Whether you need a gaming, travel, gym, or lifestyle headphones, the Hibernations got you covered. The new Hibernation 5s, link in the description. Customize the way you hear the world. Welcome to the nation. Are you tired of your YouTube videos not getting any views? Well, consider TubeBuddy. I've used TubeBuddy for years to scale up my YouTube channel. Now we're sitting over 200,000 subscribers. TubeBuddy is a browser extension that offers a ton of built-in productivity and time-saving services to take your channel to the next level. Use my link in the description to get started with TubeBuddy and level up your channel faster. We working.